Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. It's that time of year again, we're coming up to Christmas, it's only four weeks away and there's Christmas cards to be done. Now if you've been doing the Own Your Christmas Challenge or you're a little organised, you'll have your Christmas cards already done but sometimes you need more, sometimes you forget, you run out of opportunities and you need to get them done in a hurry. This is a really simple template I'm going to show you that you can batch make in no time. I've already gone ahead and prepped um, most of it. Um, I've done the card bases in two orientations. I've done the sentiments. I've done the card fronts. And I've stamped the inserts already. So these just need to be put together. I'm going to quickly show you the fastest way to make your card bases if you are making them. Otherwise, you can use ready-made card bases. It's fine. I will use very vanilla cardstock because that is what... Whoops. My next cards will be based on okay a4 cardstock cut it down to 29 centimeters that will leave you with a about a six mil quarter inch strip don't throw it out it is very useful now two ways you can do this you can then score first cap score at 14 and a half centimeters and I am using my paper trimmer to score and cut because my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer does both. Now I can move the cutting blade up and I have two A-fold card bases done. Or I'll get another piece of very vanilla if that's not the orientation that you want to use. I need one sheet, not half a dozen. Again, we're going to trim it down to 29 centimeters. Now I know a lot of people will just fold it in half. That's fine if that's what you want to do. I like to make it easier for measuring, especially for my mats, and not do you know, seven millimetres or eight millimetres, it nearly drives me nuts. Do it in half mil, half centimetre in increments. Keep that strip. Now, we are going to score on the ten and a half inch. Laid out of the way, scoring. I'm going up and down a few times so that I can see it. And cutting at 14 and a half centimetres and that gives you a card oops let me get this out of the way now and that will give me oh, my silicon mat down so I can see there we go where's my bone folder and I might as well do this while I'm here Do them both while I am here. Okay, folding in, lining up the edges, lining the edges, walking back. Okay, same deal. Lining it up. bottom edges yeah I didn't look that one's out so let's try again line up your bottom edges so they are level and then walk your card back you'll end up with a perfect fold every time there you go walk back 
and use the burn folder to burnish. Okay, that's two more done. Just wanted to show you that so that you know what we're doing. With the little strips, I've cut down um, six in Mossy Meadow, six card bases in Mossy Meadow, six in Cherry Cobbler. And I have kept the strips I've cut off because I'm going to use them. Okay, so again, we need to fold and burnish. So let's go fold. Burnish. And I'm folding with the, when you score, you've got a bumpy line and an indent. I'm folding with the bumpy line to the inside. Excuse my head if you've got my head in the way, just so I can see what I am doing. Because there's nothing worse than having a card that's slightly off kilter. Now, this is one of my favourite templates to be used works perfectly for Christmas cards but I'll show you a birthday card that I've done with it you can use it for new babies you can use it for get well anything but it really lends itself to batch making cards now let's do these ones cherry cobbler again the score indent is to the inside Da, 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 da. Cherry Cobbler and Mossy Meadow uh, Stampin' Up Cardstock Colours and this is Stampin' Up Cardstock I will put a link to all the materials I use in the video in the description box below it will take you straight to my Stampin' Up shop if you don't have a Stampin' Up demonstrator and you would like any of these products or a catalog or you would like some help you've got some questions let me know i would love to help you because card making is something i've been doing for so long that i just bit the bullet earlier this year and went nope, now i'm going to be a demonstrator there's a lot of advantages to being a demonstrator. If you want to know why I became a demonstrator, I'll put the link below to that story. But it all hinges on a $5 Mossy Meadow stamp pad that I am still using years later. Card base is done. Right. Now, when I'm what did I do with those good question oh, there okay when I am batching I like to do all the cutting then all the folding then all the gluing so I've got them all set let's do the inserts uh, inserts green and all it says is wishing you a festive Christmas. And that is actually from a retired stamp set called, oh no, maybe it's not retired. It's from the Trucking Along stamp set. Um, I have to check. Now I can't remember. I've had a mental block. Okay, I'm using art glitter glue. And you'll see double sided because I marked one up. This insert is cut in very vanilla and it is just a half a centimetre smaller than the inside of the card. So I get just a nice neat little border. Now I tend to leave them open and flat just to give the glue time to dry. Your liquid glue dries very quickly anyway. But we don't want it smushing out, so just a thin bead. 
as you which is one reason why I love art glitter glue you only need a very thin bead um, and there we go and it sticks really really well coming into summer it's going to be even better bottle goes a very long way with this stuff you will get many many cards out of a bottle of uh, glitter glue of course if you don't like liquid glue you can use tear tape or you could use um, snail if you wanted to but I do like uh, glitter glue um, Stampin' Up does sell uh, oops, the green Tombow now I've got some out smushed out there because I was a bit careless. Do you sell the green Tombow and it's very good? I just prefer uh, glitter glue. Someone's going to say, Now, yeah. here we go. Gremlins at play. Why do I only have five green inserts when I know I cut and stamp to six? So let me see. I think it's at the back here. Oh, yes. Right. Found that last night. I'll tell you, it has been the strangest day. I went, had my shower, cleaned the bathroom, came out, picked up my T-shirt, turned around, went to put the T-shirt on and it was gone. Somewhere in that 2.7 seconds between when I picked it up and turned around to put it on, I'd put it down without realising and then didn't know where I'd put it. Um, liquid glue also gives you a little bit of wriggle room if you need it. Now we're on to the cherry cobbler. If you need it for straightening things up and moving them around. Now, a hint to get your insert of equal borders all the way around is if you line up an equal space at the t on the left side across the top and down the right side if they match the bottom will match they will have equal space all the way around if you have cut your inserts to be a half a centimeter or a centimeter or whatever So you just line it up so it's equal down a bit. That's it. Cool. This is going very quickly. So much fun. Have you all finished your Christmas cards? Isn't it good that we, you know, with the price of stamps, I was afraid that the cost of sending Christmas cards would go up. But still 65 cents, folks for 2023 anyway so that's one good thing to come out of australia post this year christmas stamps that's 65 cents as long as you mark your envelope christmas card only i have a little stamp that does that you can get little stickers that do that i think the stamps come with little stickers that say card only too so there we go. They are available up until I think, oh, I want to say the 3rd of January, but I don't know why I want to say that. 31st of December and for postings up until the 3rd of January, I would check that. I won't, don't take my word for it. Check it on the OzPost website. Okay, insides are done. Now, you will see that with these, whoops, that one's a bit crooked. Crooked at the top, wasn't watching. I've stamped in the middle. Stamped in the middle. If you don't want to write a great big long message, you just want to write a dear Jane from John or whatever, stamp in the middle of your insert. If you want to write a bit of a nicer message, dear Jane, Hope you and the family have a lovely Christmas. Look forward to catching up in the new year, love, John. Put your greeting either at the top or the bottom so you've got clear space to write. 
I have a customer who doesn't like leaving messages. She likes to write to from dear whoever from whoever. And so she much prefers, and I know if I'm doing cards for her, to stamp in the centre. Um, if you want to make this into a family letter, put another piece of very vanilla over here. You could even go onto the back and write your letter there. Your family catch-up letter writes. Okay, that's 12 cards. Now we've got the mats done. We'll do the red ones first because I don't need to think about these. These are all the same. Design a series paper on a piece of very vanilla cardstock so that we have a nice contrast. And again, art glitter glue. Now I'll explain this in a moment. So I'm going to get this, like this, and onto here. I wanted to do a sentiment on the front. So I stamped Happy Christmas Wishes and I wanted to punch it out. I didn't want to, I had all this very vanilla cardstock here that, you know, is going to be wasted. So what I did was punched out using the modern oval die. Isn't it nice? I love this die punched it out before I stuck the DSP to the front and then I was able to stamp onto them. Saves just a little bit of cardstock. Make sure if your paper, your designer series paper has a one-way design that you are putting it on the card the right way up because, you know, we've all made mistakes and not you know realize we've opened the card the wrong way or stuck it down the wrong way sometimes you can get it off sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and start from scratch usually if I do that I just trim it down and stick it to another card front um, rather than waste it. Because it's so much easier. Now, right at the moment, the Stampin' Up, let me talk about Stampin' Up stuff for a minute. So many hats I wear these days. Wife, mum, cheapskater. A few exciting things happening there that I'll be talking about in the YouTube Live this week. So I do hope you'll join me on Tuesday night. Catch up because I missed last week. Um, and Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. I know, seems quite odd, doesn't it? I want that to go over the edge. Um, that was a bit boogie. That's going to if I push down too hard. Okay, they're done. Right, now we've got these. I have two going this way. Two of these, two stars, and four in the plaid, which is, that is just the reverse of the plaid. Got to love, got to love double-sided designer series paper. Gives you so many more options. It's another reason, another reason I chose to become Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. Um, if you want to know the main reason, so I could get my products cheaper. After using my Mossy Meadow, $5 Mossy Meadow stamp pad for uh, a long, long time, and it's still going strong, and it was second hand when I got it, it occurred to me that paying full price for quality products was ridiculous when I don't have to. So I made the call and decided to join as a demonstrator so that I could 
pay less for my products. I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you that or not. I suppose you think I would be because you do. And it's perfectly okay. They don't care. They don't care that I'm a, what they call a hobby demonstrator. I buy the products mostly for myself. Just making sure that's a bit straight. To use in my own craft room. Over the years, and the card ladies will know because they're, they're all along with me, we have tried so many different products. And we've tried so many different card stocks, so many different inks. Um, so many different dyes and have been let down every time and you don't want to put a lot of work into something when the materials are not quite up to your expectation and you're not happy with the end result so I started using because I had my Mossy Meadow, my trusty, I've still got it, trusty Mossy Meadow, CA, that's me, Mossy Meadow ink pad. I tried some of their cardstock. I love their cardstock. Look at it. It cuts beautifully every time. There's no burring on this cardstock from any of the cuts. It's square. A lot of it, a lot of the cardstock that we, or I was trying, wasn't square. That messes with my tiny brain. Okay, can't stand it. I'd spend more time squaring up the piece of cardstock than anything else. Alrighty, now what I want to do with these little strips, where are they? I've cut the longer strips down to 10 centimeters so they fit across that like that so let's just stick those down and I'm going to do these individually I thought about lying laying them all out on my silicon craft sheet and just going with the glue it's me you know it would end up trying to find the birth okay you know it would end up in a disaster so, oops, it's roughly wherever you think it should be on your card. Like so. Very handy having checks on here to make them a straight line. Makes eyeballing it to keep it level easy doesn't it wonder how I'll go with the um, words we'll soon see how I go with this now it's, no it has to be green because we're putting vanilla on top aren't we and so I wonder how this will go with the very vanilla strip but no we're going to do the green being a little bit um Go. I was going to say monotone. Is that the right word? Green, um, with green. Oh, that one's a bit crooked, but anyway, it's the DSP that's crooked, not. Now let's do the cherry cobbler. Let's see how they go. See how fast they're coming together. I'm talking. If I wasn't talking. I'm pretty sure they go a little bit faster. I love this paper. It's got just words on it. You know, peace on earth, North Pole, under the whistletoe, tidings of comfort and joy, um, fa -la -la, 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 la la Merry Christmas, Happy Christmas. This is a retired paper pack. Under the mistletoe, peace, love and happiness sorts of lovely words on it for a Christmas card okay like this goes like this um, deck the halls what else can I see on here um, have a 
Merry Little Christmas. Sometimes I pick them up and they don't look quite the right size. I'm a bit skeptical. Okay, like so. So now this template, this, this card design is simple enough that the kids could do it for their um, school friends, for their teachers. They can make their own cards. Now, if you don't want them to use your good designer series paper, let them cut up wrapping paper or have to trim this one down. Okay, where's my skizzers? Skizzers have gone. Okay, bring in the paper trimmer. Had to be at ten. Uh, what ten? Okay, hold it. It's just a tiny sliver I'm taking off. things all day now the scissors are gone where have my scissors gone ah. okay lift it off carefully where there Tell it's a real time crafting, and um, you know, it's real, folks. This is my craft room, this is what happens in my craft room. Okay, that's those done. Now, what I want to do is just put dimensionals on the back of these. Now, you will see that I have um, huh, moved the camera. Sorry guys, don't know how that happened, and now we're a bit crooked. Anyway, I have um, inked the edges of these, just because they look better inked. Now this packet of dimensionals has been a bit of a pain. One, two, one. If you are going to post it, I would suggest using maybe four on each one just to balance it out so that it doesn't get squished in the post. But most of these will be given out by hand. They're the green ones, so let's do the green ones first. And all I'm going to do is take the backings off, pop it over, and decide where I want it to go. Just there, like that. Let's do all these backings. Do them all at once. And it's slightly more time efficient. I know, you'd find that hard to believe. Sometimes I do too. That one come off? No. Tricky little bloaters, these things. One more. Okay. Flip it over. These are very simple, but they look so, so good. And they take no time to do. Yeah. Let's 
the mossy meadow done let's bring in the cherry cobbler same deal flip them out upside down pop your dimensionals on so put the dimensionals one two three Hold up. That is very sticky. Stubborn little writers. Take the backings off. Do the same thing with these and just ink the edges with cherry cobbler. To do that, I did cheat. I'm not suggesting that this is not a recommended method of doing it. I'll show you in a moment. But I just simply ran the edges very gently over the ink pad. When the cherry cobbler ones went over, obviously the cherry cobbler ink and the mossy meadow went over the mossy meadow ink. Okay, put it the right way up and pop it down. Put it the right way up and pop it down. Easy peasy. These cards are now ready to be written in. And go into addressed envelopes. I don't know, like the look of that. Okay. And put that there. There we go. Ta da! 12 cards. All finished. Move that out of your way. So you can only see the pretty <laughs> backings everywhere. Lacy dog comes and finds them, and that's hilarious. Okay, there they are with the insides done. They are ready to be written in, and sent. So that will be my next job, writing in them and getting them in the post. So that took, well, we've been going 32 minutes since, you know, the beginning and I've been waffling and whatever. It didn't take long at all. It doesn't take long at all. If you think you don't have time to make your own cards, think again, you know, and you don't have to do it in a half hour session. You could do 10 minutes here and get all the card bases done. You could do another 10 minutes and get all the inserts done, another 10 minutes and do all the fronts. Do them in batches. It's time efficient and it's energy efficient and it's actually much more efficient, um, a much more efficient way of using your pretty card stock and your beautiful designer series papers. Then do all your stamping, then do all the assembling all at once. 12 cards. 32 minutes all done so i hope you enjoyed watching me make these cards all the measurements and details will be on my website i will put a link to it um, below in the description box below along with um, links to my shop for materials and tools that i've used today if you liked my video a thumbs up would be muchly appreciated if you're not already subscribed to our channel I don't just talk about cards. I do card making a lot, but we talk about other things at the Cheapskates Club too. All manner of living life the Cheapskates way. Um, so hit that subscribe button and join us as we talk about living the Cheapskates way because, you know, it is doable even in 2023. Okay, I will be back very, very soon with another um, Cheapskates Club video. That will show you how to save money, time and energy. But until then, guys, happy cheapskating.